What is going on, guys and gals? Brooklyn Bound the Raid Scientist here, and today we're bringing you the full guide to the Deep Stone Crypt Raid. This is going to be a detailed, in depth guide of all the encounters, mechanics, loadouts, hidden chests, and more. So buckle yourself in. There will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a particular encounter. Please note that putting these raid guides together takes a ton of time. So if you don't mind, Give the video a thumbs up, a share, or even hit the sub button below so you can support the channel and get connected as I release more guides on the raid challenges, triumphs, and more. Okay, let's get into it. The Deep Stone Crypt takes you deep into the secrets of Clovis Bray's hidden facility where he created the Exos. The Fallen have invaded this dormant crypt, and LC Bray has sent you there to take them out. The raid starts in the Eventide Ruins where you'll head into the building on the right and clear out the enemies before a hatch will open up, allowing you to enter. Travel through the tunnels and you will approach an airlock, which will have the first encounter. The goal here is to survive the cold and make it to the end of the blizzard. You'll know that you've made it to the end when you reach the bubble with the two brigs outside and the airlock next to it. To do this, you'll either use the pikes that are provided or just use your sparrow to navigate through the storm from bubble to bubble, keeping sheltered from the storm. Note that our sparrow is actually much faster and easier to use in my opinion, but it's up to you. The mechanic of this encounter is that if you are not in the heat bubble, you will stack frostbite. That will kill you if it reaches 10 stacks. So you need to quickly reach each bubble to survive the cold. At each checkpoint, there will be some enemies and a teleporter. You only need to use the teleporter if you need to go back to a previous bubble for any reason. It will take you back one bubble exactly in order to possibly help or guide somebody. Ultimately, just go from bubble to bubble until you reach the end. Destroy the Briggs and you can move on. There is no encounter chest here, but be sure to grab the first secret chest before leaving this area, which is right outside the last bubble where you destroyed the Briggs. Follow the path on screen to reach it. As you enter the crypt, you'll make your way to the first true encounter of this raid, disabling crypt security. For loadouts, I recommend ad clearing supers for the most part for each class, as there will be ongoing waves of ads that never stop coming throughout the encounter. Having one person on a well or a bubble may be of benefit if you're trying to go for a quick finish to boost damage on the fuses, but isn't really required in the grand scheme of things. Weapon-wise, a good sword here will do amazing against the captains, and overload captains, falling guillotine, lament, etc. A good slug shotgun does pretty good damage against the fuses, and other than that, any ad clearing weapon for more close range combat is very helpful. As I said, there are overload captains, so make sure you equip some way to stun them using your artifact mods. Pretty much any heavy is going to be pretty good against the fuses. This encounter will introduce two mechanics that will be present in every encounter of this raid, so it's best to familiarize yourself with how they work now. This entire raid revolves around acquiring specific augment buffs that can be either collected from the yellow teleporter looking panels, or coming from specific enemies that have the icon over their head. These buffs will allow you to do a specific task in each encounter that is required for completing it. Note that the receptacles can store the augments are actually global, so you can use them to transfer buffs to other people wherever one may exist. This encounter introduces the operator augment and the scanner augment. The operator augment is red and the person holding it typically executes a specific task. In this encounter, the operator can shoot the panels around the arena to open doors and the panels downstairs to activate the DPS portion of the fight, which I'll cover in a minute. The scanner buff is yellow, and the person holding it typically has a true sight style buff which allows them to see something that others can't. In this encounter, the scanner will be identifying which of the panels down below in the server area need to be shot by the operator to trigger the DPS phase. So that's a basic overview of what each buff can do, and 
how they'll generally be used in this fight. So, how do you actually run this encounter? The goal here is to disable the security system by destroying the six fuses located in the middle of the arena. You can see three in each of the two rooms. However, in order to damage them, to destroy them, you have to lower their shields first. So, split your team up evenly with three people staying in the first room, which I call the light room, and three people in the room to the right, which I call the dark room. You'll pre-assign a few roles ahead of time. One person in the dark room will be a scanner. One person in the light room will be a scanner, and one person will be the initial operator. The operator, the red, buff, will already be located in the receptacle, and picking it up actually will start the fight. When the fight starts, ads will start spawning, which should be cleared, and an enemy in the dark room will spawn with the scanner buff, notated by the yellow icon over its head. When he dies, he'll drop the scanner augment, which someone in the dark room should pick up. To disable the shields and the fuses to destroy them, someone with the operator buff needs to go down below and shoot four panels located randomly throughout the room in a relatively short period of time, about 60 seconds. However, there are 10 panels downstairs and shooting the incorrect one causes the security to enable and burn you to death. So what will need to happen is that the operator is opening the doors and heading downstairs. The person with the scanner in the dark room will need to look down to the room below through the glass windows in the floor to identify which of the two panels on the dark side need to be shot by the operator and call them out. Then, the person in the dark room with the scanner will put it into the augment terminal so someone on the light side of the room can pick it up and do the same thing on the light side. Look through the windows in the floor and call out the two panels in the light side that need to be activated. This diagram on screen shows the windows in the floor where the panels can be located when looking from up top and how to number them. You can see that there are five that can be seen from the dark side and five that can be seen from the light side. You can identify them however you want. Just make sure the operator and the scanners are clear which, which is which. And if you're new to the raid, I highly suggest taking five minutes or so and reviewing the callouts and confirming you know where each panel is from the windows, as some are easy to spot and some have to be looked through for a very specific vantage point. Note, while the fight is progressing, servitors and overload captains will spawn, so take them out quickly. If servitors are up, it will disable the use of the augment terminal, so you cannot pass the buff. So, if the four correct panels below are shot before the security enables downstairs, it'll unlock the shields around the fuses, and they will be damageable. But, don't go crazy just yet, because if you shoot the wrong one, you'll wipe instantly. This is where a quick buff swap will need to happen to identify which of the fuses need to be shot, and you'll shoot them one at a time. First, the operator who is down below will insert the operator augment into the terminal downstairs, and someone up top will need to grab it. Then the person upstairs that has the scanner buff will need to put the scanner into the terminal just as fast, so the person downstairs can now pick it up. Remember, the terminal can only hold one buff at a time, so you must be quick. Once the player down below grabs the scanner buff, they will look up at the fuses, three on each side, for the one that is yellowish to be called out to be damaged. We use left, middle, and right callouts for dark side and light side, based on if you're standing and staring at them. When the scanner calls out the fuses to be shot, the players up top will damage that fuse until it explodes. They don't require a ton of damage, but it's still best to use heavy or shotguns or burst DPS to knock them out as fast as you can, because the DPS window is timed, so the faster you damage and destroy each fuse, the more fuses you can destroy in one DPS phase. It is possible to get all six if you are really, really fast, and maybe even have a little RNG luck, but if not, simply rinse and repeat. The person with the scanner buff who is downstairs will insert the scanner back into the terminal so the person in the dark room can pick it back up and start looking for the next set of panels. And the person who is holding the operator buff during DPS will shoot the doors and head downstairs, which will let out the person who's currently trapped down there, and they'll swap positions. The person that was downstairs the first round will take the person's place upstairs, and the new operator will now shoot the called out panels on the walls. 
Remember that once the operator enters the security area downstairs, the hidden 60 second timer will start. So the swap and the new callouts all need to happen in quick succession. Repeat this process again until you've successfully destroyed all six fuses and complete the encounter. A few final notes. First, there is an overall white mechanic timer to this encounter too if you simply just take too long to get to DPS phase. The icons underneath the fuses will fill up, and once full, the fuses will overload and wipe you. And secondly, only one person can go through the airlock at a time to head downstairs. So, unfortunately, this prevents you from just sending down both the scanner and the operator together. Collect your loot, and head deeper into the crypt until you reach the next encounter. The Fallen have successfully converted Atrax into a Fallen Exo, Atrax 1. And surprise, he has resurrected Tanix again, who you'll see later. For now, he'll be fighting Atrax 1 in the raid's second encounter. To prepare for this encounter, you'll want to pre-assign some roles. First, you'll split your team up into two groups of three again. Three people designated to go up into the space station, and three people to stay down below in the Deep Stone Crypt. One of the three people designated in the space station should also be designated as the operator, and another person in the space station should be assigned as the scanner, as well as another person down in the crypt should also be assigned a scanner. For class selections, I recommend DPS supers like Bubble, Well of Radiance, or maybe Nova Bomb, and Golden Gun with Celestial Nighthawk. There are a lot of adds in this fight, but they typically are spread out all over the place and aren't usually too much of an issue. This fight is all mechanics and DPS. For weapons, there are a few options for damaging Atrax. Swords are a very, very good option here, but they do require you to be fast to get to the boss to get your damage in. Make sure you properly use your heavy attack on whatever sword you are using because DPS windows are very, very short. Other options such as Xenophage, High Burst Damage Shotguns, or Chaining Damage Supers like Nova Bomb and Golden Gun are great too. Ultimately, the Exotic Sword The Lament is the best damage option. Go get it if you haven't. The goal of this encounter is to destroy Atrax 1 and his replications. To do so, you'll constantly be using the scanner buff to identify which the real version of Atrax is, damaging him, and then getting rid of his replication soul afterwards. So, when the fight starts, waves of adds will start spawning in the left, middle, and right areas of the arena. All six players should split up two left, two mid, and two right to clear adds. And note there will be four replicates of A-Tracks that are all immune and can be pretty lethal, so keep your distance. Eventually, the Operator Vandal will spawn. Once he dies, have the person designated to be the Operator pick it up, and head into one of the drop pods in the middle of the arena to travel up to the space station. In addition, the two other players designated to go into the outer space should go as well. Be sure to help kill the servers before you go. Now, you'll have three players up in space and three players still down in the crypt. The three players up in space will also have ways of adds, four replicates of Atrax, and three servitors as well. They should start working on the ads and look for the Vandal with the yellow scanner buff that will randomly spawn left, middle, or right. Do not kill all the servitors until someone on your team has the scanner buff. Once that person has picked up the buff, you can finish killing the servitors to start the DPS phase. And you need the scanner buff to properly do DPS. So, when that last servitor dies, Atrax will start his white mechanic and DPS phase. All four replicates up in space will glow white and start to charge up an attack. The scanner will be the only one able to see which of the four replicates is the real one, and it will have the same yellow grid-like appearance as any other scannable in the raid. As soon as you identify which one is real, all three players need to burst DPS him together to prevent him from wiping the raid. Note that the DPS window is literally like five seconds or less, so burst him with swords or whatever you're going to be using very fast. If you damage the wrong one, you will wipe. And if you damage the real one too late, or not enough, it's a wipe as well. Immediately after he disappears, two things need to happen. First, one player, who is not the operator, 
must pick up the purple orb that Atrax dropped on the ground. This is the replication of Atrax buff that must be held. I'll cover what to do with it in a minute. This has to be picked up quickly and it will have a 40 second timer. Secondly, the person holding the scanner augment that's in space needs to very quickly deposit it into one of the terminals. This is because the exact same thing will now happen with the three players that are down in the crypt. All four replicates down there will glow white, and the player designated as the scanner down in the crypt must quickly grab the augment from the terminal to identify which one is real so it can be quickly damaged before wiping the raid. Then, this same mechanic repeats again. He'll drop a purple orb and someone will need to pick it up, and the scanner must again deposit the scanner replication buff into the terminal. At this point, one person in space will be holding the Atrax replication buff, and now one person in the crypt will have it as well. Note that if the person holding the Atrax replication buff reaches zero, they will die. However, to prevent this, the operator, who is in the space station, can literally shoot above the player's head holding the buff, and it will cause them to drop it on the ground, resetting the timer. Note that it must be picked back up again. So, the person down in the crypt that just grabbed the replication buff should immediately hop into one of the pods and travel up to the space station, because that is the only location that the replicate of Atrax buffs can be disposed of properly. As they are traveling up, the space team is going to need to repeat their second round of damage exactly as the first, picking up the scanner, identifying the Atrax replicate, and damaging it, then redepositing the buff in the terminal so the crypt team can again repeat their second damage phase. At this point, you'll start to have several players juggling the Atrax replication buffs, and it'll be time to get rid of them. On the sides of the arena up in space are airlocks that must be opened by the operator by shooting the panel. Once they are open, any player holding a replication buff can enter it quickly, and the operator can shoot the buff off them again, but this time it'll get sucked out into space, removing it completely. There are eight airlocks, and they can only be used once, so it's best to group up people together and remove buffs together. We typically will get rid of the first three people in one airlock, and then have the last person remove theirs in a second one. Remember, for one full round of DPS, you'll have four buffs to get rid of, two from the players up in space, and two from the players down in the crypt. As a quick review, a full DPS cycle consists of destroying the first replicate in space, then a replicate in the crypt, then a replicate in space, and finally a second replicate in the crypt. The scanner buff should be redeposited after each replicate is damaged, so the next team can use it. Once four replicates have been damaged, and their replicate buffs have been picked up and removed via the airlocks in space, the entire process will repeat all over again until you get his health down to about 10%. Teams should reorganize back to their original positions, get ready to clear ads and servitors again. The operator can shoot the panels next to the drop pods to send extra drop pods down to the crypt team if needed at any point. When you finally have gotten his health down to the marker on his health bar, he will trigger a final stand. All players remaining in the crypt should take a teleporter up to space, and all six players should congregate together. Note that if any player still has a replicate buff, it still must be juggled and reset during final stand. There likely won't be enough time to get rid of it via the airlocks. For the final stand, all eight replicates of Atrax will respawn up in the space station and repeat the same wipe mechanic. The scanner should identify the real one, and everyone will quickly congregate and damage it. Be very clear and careful with your callouts here, because if you damage the wrong one, you'll wipe. So make sure the scanner is very clear which one is the real one. Keep repeating this very quickly until his health is finally depleted and you complete the encounter. The trick with this encounter is really all in the rhythm of the damage cycles and swapping the scanner buff back and forth from space station to crypt. Once you get the rhythm down, it's really not too bad. Always remember to deposit the scanner in the terminal so the other team can use it, and be sure to burst damage the real Atrax as much as possible before he disappears to minimize the number of DPS cycles you need to do. 
Note that if you are the operator in this fight, you need to be very careful to stay away from the players carrying the replicate of Atrax buffs, because if you accidentally pick one up, you won't be able to reset it, because you can't shoot yourself. Give the players a warning that you are resetting their buff so it doesn't fall on the ground without them knowing as well. Once you've grabbed your loot, exit out to the door to the right of the space station area and head into the next section, which is a platforming section. You'll make your way out into outer space and traverse across the catwalks and platforms until you reach the second chest of the raid. Follow the path on screen to get to it. Next, continue across all the platforms until you reach the big opening with some brigs and an airlock, and eventually you're moved to the third encounter, Tanix Reborn. Atrax successfully revived Tanix, and coupled with that, Clovis Bray's security measure has kicked in, and he is attempting to crash the space station into Europa to destroy the planet. You will be attempting to prevent that from happening while dealing with Tanix the entire time. To prepare this encounter, you'll need to pre-assign people into pairs. Two people will be responsible for scanner, two people will be responsible for operator, and two people will be responsible for a new augment called suppressor. I'll cover what each does in a minute. For weapons, you'll want ad clearing meta weapons here as well as ad clearing supers. There is no boss damage, so things like shotguns, hand cannons, swords, HMGs, etc. will all do well in taking out the enemies. There will be captains and overload captains too, so make sure you have overload rounds and some heavy hitting weapons to get rid of them. They can stack up and overwhelm the room quickly. This fight can get kind of chaotic with all the ads everywhere, so my best tip is to just not stop shooting stuff through the whole fight. The goal of the encounter is to deposit rounds of nuclear bombs into receptacles to destroy the ship before it crashes into Europa. You'll have to clear a total of six waves to finish. The entire time, Tanix is there trying to stop you, along with tons of enemies. Before we go through the mechanics, here is a brief map of the area with some of the callouts that you can reference. You'll see that in the front of the room near Tanix there are four bins, which is where the nuclear bombs will be placed as well as four locations on the left and right side of the map where they actually spawn and will be picked up. You'll also see the three spots that the suppressor will use to carry out their job notated here as well. You can see them in the game by looking for the little floating spheres above a circle. When the fight starts, ads will start spawning everywhere and three enemies carrying the three buffs will randomly spawn in random locations. When identified, Call their locations out so the people responsible for each augment buff can go pick them up. Remember that you'll have two people assigned for each role, but only one of them will need to grab the initial augment buff. The other person will come into play a little later. Around the time all three players have grabbed their buffs, sirens will go off indicating that the bombs are getting ready to spawn. When this happens, each person holding each augment will have a different job. The operator will need to locate the wall panel on one of the bomb locations glowing red and shoot it. Doing this in time will prevent three bombs from spawning and only give you two. Note that the bombs will try to spawn in three of the four spots, and they have a yellowish flashing look to them to signify that one is getting ready to spawn. Secondly, the scanner will need to notate which of the bins at the front of the map are glowing yellow indicating they are the correct ones the bombs need to be placed in, and call them out. Finally, the suppressor will be responsible for stunning Tanix, because you cannot deposit the bombs into the bins until he is suppressed. The suppressor has to stand under the three floating orbs on the left ledge, middle, and right ledge of the room, and shoot Tanix at each of them to successfully stun him. 
This needs to be done quickly, as the longer it takes to stun, the longer the players carrying the bombs will need to hold them, risking deaths. So when the bombs do spawn, the remaining players need to pick them up and carry them to the bins that the scanner called out. There are four locations, and as I said, you'll either get two or three bombs depending on if the operator got to their panel in time. If the bombs aren't picked up in time, they'll explode and you'll wipe. So be sure anyone who isn't a suppressor make sure it's a priority to pick them up. As you carry them, you'll start to stack radiation. And if you get to 10, you will die as well. So if you start to get close to 10, call out for a teammate to take the bomb from you. You cannot drop it yourself, it must be taken from you. And with that said, if you are not actively carrying a bomb at this point, be in position to take one from another player by shadowing them and clearing ads for them. As a team, deposit the bombs into the bins the scanner called out, and if done correctly, that will be one round, and you'll need to repeat this until you've done six rounds. After each round, clear ads, change buffs, which I'll cover in a second, and look for overload captains that you need to destroy as well. Now, a very important mechanic is that each team is in pairs, as I mentioned, because after each round of bombs, randomly, one of the three augment buff holders will get deactivated, meaning they can't use their buff, so they must place it in the terminal so it can be picked up by another player. So for example, if you're the suppressor and you get augment deactivated, you'll put it back into the terminal and call out for the other person assigned to suppressor to go pick it up. As the fight progresses, you'll notice the crashing ship you're on will start moving faster and enter Europa's orbit and it'll get all fiery and red outside. While this is a neat cinematic, it has nothing to do with the fight's mechanics. Keep continuing as I've described and you'll eventually finish. It is one of the easier encounters, as long as everybody follows callouts and executes their roles properly and quickly. Once all the bombs have been placed and all the rounds have been completed, some dialogue will be heard and the hatch in the middle of the room of the floor will open. Quickly drop down and it will be an all-out sprint to the end, ignoring all the enemies and Tanix as he will be chasing you. If you make it to the end, the doors will close trapping Tanix inside and you'll have successfully completed the encounter. And destroy the ship and preventing it from detonating on Europa, instead crashing it into the eventide ruins. Collect your chests and move forward down to the final encounter. The final encounter of the Deep Zone Crypt, you'll be fighting Tanix the Abomination as he survived the crash as well, and you must finish him off once and for all. There are a lot of similarities between the mechanics of this fight and the previous encounter, but some key major differences as well. To prepare, you'll once again want to have three pairs of people. Two assigned as Operator, two assigned as Scanner, and two assigned as Suppressor. For weapons, I highly suggest one person running Divinity for DPS phase. For damage, snipers with Vorpal Weapon and Triple Tap work very well with the Divinity, such as Cloud Strike, Adored, Long Shadow, etc. And another good option is Precision Frame Shotguns, especially if they have Vorpal Weapon or Auto Loading Holster. But note that using shotguns for DPS, you need a Warlock with Luna Faction Boost to get the range boost. If you don't either have a good shotgun or a good sniper, other things such as Xenophage and grenade launchers or other heavy hitting DPS weapons will work. For class setup, you'll want one Titan running bubble with weapons of light and one Warlock running Well of Radiance with Luna Faction Boots for a fast reload. Hunters should be running Golden Gun with Celestial Nighthawk and additional Warlocks can run Nova Bomb for additional DPS. If you aggro the pile of rubble in the middle, the fight will start and Tanix will pop out, now floating on a Mario Kart looking vehicle with four thrusters. Waves of enemies will start spawning in each of the three areas that we typically designate as Spawn, Blue, and Orange. Spawn being just to the left of where you rally, Blue being the far left dark area, and Orange being the orange lit area to the right. The goal here 
is to obviously kill Tanix for like the fifth time now. By depositing nuclear cores into the six bins scattered around the area. There are two bins in each area and you can identify them however you want. I usually just number them one through six, starting at the spawn, going around to blue and then to orange as shown in the diagram. Along with the waves of enemies, the three vandals with the operator scanner and suppressor buffs from the last encounter will spawn as well. Operator always spawns in the spawn area, scanner always spawns in the blue area, and suppressor always spawns in the orange area. Note that these enemies won't spawn until you've cleared enough adds, so keep killing adds and captains quickly to get them to spawn. Have a designated player pick up the first one and get ready to execute the next phase of the fight. The scanner will need to quickly look at the six bins around the arena for the two that are glowing yellow and call them out. During this time, Tanix will migrate his way to one of the three corners and his thrusters will start glowing and he'll start raining down purple hell from above. The goal here is to shoot two of his thrusters enough to get them to drop nuclear cores. Be sure to stay mobile while doing this as the mortars he's dropping will kill you. Once he's dropped two cores, designate two players to quickly pick them up before they explode. The two scanners should always be on a pickup team and the person on the operator team without the buff and the person on the suppressor team without the buff should be on the other pickup team. This is because it's a long walk to deposit the bombs and you need to likely have two people assigned to each one so you can relieve your partner when their radiation stacks get too high. Remember, if you get to 10 radiation stacks, you die. While these two pairs of players are carrying the bombs to the locations called out by the scanner, the operator and the suppressor have very important jobs to execute. First, the operator will be responsible for freeing the bomb carrying players from a detainment bubble that Tanix will randomly place on them. If the operator shoots it, it will free them. Be very careful as the operator to not get near any of the bomb carrying players as if you get detained yourself, things can get ugly quickly because you can't shoot yourself out. The suppressor will do the exact same thing from the previous encounter. Enter each of the three areas designated by the floating orbs and shoot Tanix from each area to ultimately stagger him, which unlocks the bins and allows the bombs to be placed in them. Remember that the section you suppress from is the same section that Tanix is in, so you can't suppress him from the orange area if he's over at the spawn, etc. Also note that if you're the suppressor, try not to stun him too fast you want to wait until his second pulse and detainment bubble goes out because otherwise the operator can get deactivated and cause a wipe. After the bombs have been placed, one of the three players holding one of the augment buffs will get deactivated like I kind of just said. Quickly call out to your partner if you are and deposit it in the terminal for them to pick up. This will require some on the fly team swaps, which is why it's best to pre-designate who will be with who in these situations. After both bombs are successfully placed into the correct bins, Tanix will repeat this process exactly one more time, with new bins to be called out by the suppressor. Teams should be designated to pick up the second two orbs, although you may have to communicate amongst each other if someone's radiation is too high, because it does take a while to get back to zero. Note that you can shoot all four thrusters to drop four bombs and deposit them in four receptacles, but this requires some skill and more communication. Either way, once four bombs have been dropped and placed into the four bins correctly, it will trigger the DPS phase of the fight. Grab ammo, reload everything, and stack up together in one pre-designated spot near the middle of the map. Tanix will migrate to the very middle and summon a large electricity field around him. As shown on screen, there is a very specific area you have to stand to DPS him. If you get too close, you die to his electricity. And if you're too far away, you can't damage him, or you'll be in the way of the spinning debris which will instantly kill you. As shown in this diagram, there is a sweet spot where you're safe from his electricity and debris and can damage him. Right as he does this, have a titan drop a bubble outside of the debris field so everyone can grab weapons of light before entering. Drop a well of radiance as well where you're actually damaging him from. 
Unload your divinity, heavy, snipers, supers, and everything you can to damage him. After about 10 or 15 seconds, he will sort of boop you out of the DPS area. Which can be convenient in a sense because you can rebuff in the Titan bubble, grab any ammo on the ground that is nearby, and then jump back in to continue damaging him. Do this until he goes immune. Then, after damage is over, check to see if you are one of the three people deactivated and swap your augment buff with your partner. And get ready to repeat the entire thing all over again. Clear adds, clear captains, grab ammo, do special finish moves if you can to get special ammo, and get ready to go. You can do three damage phases before he enrages, so make sure you do enough damage to him to get him to the final 10% within this time. Once you've successfully dropped him to the marker on his health bar, you'll enter his final stand. He will start teleporting across the three sections while raining down the purple rain of death. Unload everything you have left, heavy, supers, divinity grenades, because if you don't do enough damage, he'll wipe you. Once you finish him off, Tanix will be dead. Again. And you will have successfully finished the Deep Stone Crypt raid. You'll notice that the chest will give you your loot as well as act as a mini vendor to purchase loot caches as well. They can be purchased using Spoils of Conquest, which you can get from any of the encounters of the raid randomly, or if you repeat the raid again on the same character within a weekly reset. If you're really lucky, you'll get your hands on the Eyes of Tomorrow rocket launcher, which is an exotic drop that is random from the final boss. Best of luck in getting this done, Guardians. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below and I'm happy to help. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a share and let me know. This is such a great raid and I'm happy to finally be back to making raid guides for you all. Until next time, Guardians. Best of luck.